All right, so we are going to get started. Welcome everyone. Thank you all for being here. My name is Helen Schroeder. I'm the marketing coordinator for Sigma Assessment Systems, and I have the pleasure of being your host for this webinar today with my colleague, Shruti Kumar. If any of you are new to Sigma, we are a professional service firm that offers talent development, succession planning, and psychological assessments for organizations that are looking to build their own internal talent. Sigma has been in business for over 50 years, so we have lots of stories to tell um, and a lot of experience. And from that, we'd like to bring you this webinar series. Today, we're going to give you a small introduction to business skills. We've called it our 101. Uh, there's definitely more to learn, but we hope that this will be a practical start for you and your team. We have about 60 minutes together. For the first 45 minutes, Rudy will walk you through the content of the webinar. Feel free to send us any questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your webinar screen. We will keep track of those and save 15 minutes at the end of the webinar to go through Q&A. And you can also send more questions as they come up live during that conversation. This webinar is being recorded and we will send a recording out to you tomorrow. They will be posted on our website so you can access that. No need to take frantic notes. Uh, however, we will not be sharing the slides. Okay, without any further ado, let me introduce you to my colleague, Shruti. Some of you might remember Shruti from our last session. She did an excellent job of running our May webinar on identifying critical roles. Shruti is pursuing her PhD in industrial and organizational psychology at Western University. Her area of research expertise includes performance management, work design, and equity and inclusion. At Sigma, Shruti applies her expertise to develop evidence-based content on organizational best practices, such as this webinar today. So I will say I hope you enjoy, and I'll pass it off to Shruti now to get started. Thank you so much, Helen. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be speaking with you today about Business Skills 101. Now, business skills can be thought of as an umbrella term that encompasses quite a wide variety of skills, ranging from hard technical abilities to soft interpersonal competencies. So for the benefit of us all, I'm going to narrow this down by focusing specifically on a skill that I will refer to as business savvy. So in this webinar today, I'll define what business savvy is. I'll tell you why it's valuable for you. I'll outline some practical approaches for skill development, and I'll also give you some bonus tips and tricks for habit formation. <clears throat> now at Sigma, we use a leadership framework, and this includes a total of 50 leadership competencies that are relevant across various industries. <clears throat> Excuse me. So these competencies cover leader six, sorry, <clears throat> one moment, I'm just gonna grab some water. <clears throat> All right, so these competencies cover leader success across four areas of leadership, including cognitive, interpersonal, personal, and senior leadership skills. Business savvy is only one of these 50 competencies. Now, you'll notice that we have actually named this business acumen on our framework, but the terms business savvy and business acumen are interchangeable for our purposes. You might have also heard business savvy referred to as business instinct or business intellect. Moving forward, I'll specifically use the term business savvy, and I'll explain how we define business savvy here at Sigma. So to make sure that we're all on the same page, we define a business savvy individual as someone who demonstrates good judgment and business sense and who really understands organizational operations, <clears throat> industry trends, their business competitors, and the bottom line. So when you have a strong sense of business savvy, you're able to offer insights that go beyond your specific role to drive your organization's mission and values. Employees with business savvy also tend to be habitual learners. They embrace obstacles and learning opportunities, and they aren't afraid to learn from their mistakes. They also tend to engage in analytical thinking by asking questions, challenging their own assumptions, and tackling complex problem solving and decision making. 
Now, you may be attending this webinar because you are striving to be a more business savvy individual. This is often mistaken as an innate skill, something which you either have or don't have. However, like most other skills, you can develop your business savvy. If you feel like this simply doesn't come naturally to you, don't worry, you're in the right place. I'll review a few different approaches that you can use to cultivate this competency, and I'll also emphasize a few foundational skills that can help you to really hone in on your business savvy. Now, I'd like to invite you to respond to this poll question. How important do you think it is to have business savvy? And I'll give you about a minute to go ahead and answer that. All right, so it seems like quite a lot of you do think that it's very important. Um, and I agree, I think that it's a very important skill to develop. Um, now, some of you say that it's somewhat important um, and some of you might also come across others in your organization who don't feel that it's important at all. So for those who don't see the value in business savvy, this could be due to two reasons. As I've mentioned, some individuals believe that business savvy is an innate skill that you're born with. And while it's true that some individuals seem to have a naturally strong business instinct, anyone can work on cultivating the skill. Now, other individuals assume that business savvy is only important for workers who are in specific types of roles or are perhaps organizational leaders. However, employees across roles and across organizational levels can benefit from developing a stronger sense of business savvy, as every worker in your organization is an important driver of organizational success. So there are some who simply don't see the value of business savvy or prefer to demonstrate their expertise within their particular domain. However, these workers may experience a blinders effect, which limits their attention to daily responsibilities or to urgent problems. Instead, with business savvy, this can help them to contribute to their organization more holistically. Let's consider an administrative assistant who only focuses on achieving their basic tasks and helping to fight fires whenever they come up. Now, they're definitely getting their job done and are contributing to organizational success, but they're limiting their own value and their output to the organization. Now imagine this administrative assistant decides to flex their business savvy muscle and starts developing a better sense of organizational operations. This allows them to prioritize their responsibilities in a more effective manner. They also start paying attention to the bottom line. Now, being on the front lines, they are in the perfect position to look for opportunities to cut expenses or invest in higher quality products. Building confidence in their role and um, their uh, building confidence in their role, they start to think outside the box and they begin to make active contribution contributions in team meetings. And these contributions are in fact meaningful because of their insight and their fresh perspective. So with the better appreciation of how their specific work outputs are linked to broader organizational goals, they've not only benefited their organization, but they've also boosted their own engagement and their own satisfaction with their work. Now, I also want to emphasize that you can think about how business savvy can benefit your career over the long run. You likely won't stay in the exact same position or even in the exact same company throughout your entire life. Developing a stronger sense of business savvy can really help you to spark your professional growth. So regardless of your current place in the organizational hierarchy or your specific role, business savvy is a valuable skill for all employees.
To apply business savvy, consider the bigger picture of your role and how it's aligned with your organization's strategic vision. So you can start by reflecting on your responsibilities and thinking about where you can apply business savvy in your current tasks. Now, this might involve leveraging company resources to successfully complete major projects, or perhaps using your best judgment to limit costs. You might dedicate 30 minutes a week to staying on top of market trends in order to maintain your knowledge and take advantage of any opportunities that arise. You could also brainstorm solutions for organizational problems. Business savvy might also involve embracing newer, more efficient ways of doing things. Let's say that you're a project manager and you like to stay on top of industry trends. Because of this, you discover a new software that could bring great value to your team. You spend some time researching and learning all about this software, and you work with your company to dedicate funds for acquiring the software and for training your team. In the end, you and your team are extremely satisfied with the new software, and it allows you to effectively and strategically boost your work output and achieve organizational success. <clears throat> now, beyond applying business savvy in your regular tasks, you might also expand on your current responsibilities. <clears throat> so let's say that you are in charge of customer relations, <clears throat> excuse me, and you have been invited to um, an interdepartmental meeting. Sorry, if you could just excuse me for one moment. <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> beyond um, applying business savvy to your current tasks, you can expand on your responsibilities. So you can ask to participate. I'm so sorry, I think I just have something stuck in my throat here. Give me one moment. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so with this suggestion, I'm inviting you to ask to participate in interdepartmental meetings if these take place in your organization. So let's say that you're in charge of customer relations and your company is considering reducing the price of their products in order to retain and attract new customers. Now, based on your experiencing, <clears throat> excuse me, based on your experience managing customer feedback, you know that some customers are unhappy with your prices. Sorry, if you could just give me one moment. Thanks everyone for hanging in with us. We'll give Shruti a minute. In the meantime, feel free to brainstorm any questions that you have for the Q&A. You can use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Thank you everyone for your patience. Um, I'm back. Um, so, Basically, the point that I'm trying to make is that you can uh, apply business savvy in your current tasks. However, you can also go beyond this. So with the example that I'm trying to give, let's say that you're in charge of customer relations and you have experience managing customer feedback. So you know that some customers are unhappy with your prices. However, you also know that most customers are actually satisfied with the quality of your product. 
You're invited to participate in a meeting with the rest of the departments in your organization, so you share this during the meeting, and you go further by suggesting that the products should be marketed differently as high quality, long lasting pieces. Based on your insight, you're invited to collaborate with the marketing department, and you're able to better contribute to your company's goals. Overall, developing and practicing business savvy requires you to capitalize on your knowledge and expertise in different ways. <clears throat> now, you might be someone who struggles with fully understanding business operations, strategy, and trends. However, no matter your level and expertise, you can develop, practice, and improve your business savvy. If you don't know where to start, I'll provide you with some approaches, and you can make a plan that works best for you. Remember, like most other skills, you'll need to continually practice business savvy in order to maintain your business savvy. <clears throat> So there are a few different approaches that you can use to developing your business savvy, and they involve learning from a variety of sources and applying your knowledge. All right, so this first approach is all about learning and absorbing rather than applying your knowledge. You would start by developing a deeper understanding of organizational operations and expanding your knowledge of industry trends. So this could involve taking some time to consider who your audience is, what products and services they purchase, and how you compare to your competitors. You can also build a broader knowledge base by reading up on the fundamentals of your industry or on general business strategy. Now, there are many books, business articles, courses, certifications available, so invest in educating yourself. You can even advocate for yourself at work by asking for resources for skill development. Now, another way to enhance your knowledge is to learn as much about your company on the job. You can ask to cross train in other departments or participate in organizational meetings that center on business planning or problem solving. If these types of meetings are typically outside of your responsibility, you can always ask to sit in on them with the objective of fostering a better connection between your role and organizational objectives. You can then take this a step further by actively contributing to those types of meetings. With a different set of responsibilities, you may be able to offer a different perspective that others in your organization have not considered. You can also attend workshops, training seminars, or industry events to further deepen your knowledge. Attending an event like this one is a great first step. Don't shy away from anything that's outside of your comfort zone. Challenging yourself in this way is critical for developing business savvy. Now, if you wanna start a bit smaller, you can simply follow business leaders on social media, keep up with business news, or subscribe to industry-specific newsletters. So this next approach is all about finding ways to improve your business savvy as part of your typical job. You can first consider how to align your tasks and projects with your organization's strategic objectives. Think about the organizational vision, both in the short term and in the long term. How can you approach your current duties in order to better contribute to those objectives? You can also take the initiative to tackle new projects that are outside of your typical domain in order to flex your analytical thinking and problem solving skills. Now, those skills are foundational to business savvy, and I'll, I'll elaborate on them later on in this presentation. You can also advocate for yourself at work by requesting stretch assignments and opportunities to work with different teams and departments. Not only can you capitalize on your insight and bring a fresh perspective to these types of projects, but you can come away with new knowledge and expertise that you can draw on in the future. 
You can also ask your organization to collect customer feedback. This can lead to insights on what is working well and what isn't, giving you the opportunity to brainstorm and potentially implement change. Now, the next two approaches are about going beyond the job. So I've touched on the value of sharing knowledge with others and mentorship is a really important part of this. So I invite you to reflect on both your strengths and your developmental opportunities. And if you'd like, you can seek out a mentor for yourself or serve as a mentor for others. In fact, you can be a mentee and a mentor at the same time. Let's say that you've just started working on developing your business savvy. You've reflected on your abilities and you've even asked for informal feedback at work. You realize that while you have strong industry knowledge, you struggle with executing basic, uh, sorry, strategic business decisions. <clears throat> so you seek out a coach with years of executive experience who can help you to develop stronger problem solving and decision making skills. At the same time, you also begin to serve as a mentor to a new hire at your company. Now, mentorship can be formal or informal, but you can also share knowledge in other ways. For example, you can make connections with different colleagues or network with professionals at industry events. This may allow you to learn about areas outside of your expertise and help you generate ideas or discover unexpected opportunities. Now, you can also apply your skills outside of work. Consider volunteering with student business groups to help you exercise your business savvy in a lower stake setting with a group of individuals who could really benefit from your expertise. You might also want to participate in online business forums for exposure to different perspectives and as a way to practice discussing ideas. Overall, learning from others but also sharing your expertise with others can help you to improve your own understanding, boost your confidence, and build your knowledge foundation. Now, I recognize that some of you might already have a lot on your plate and are hesitant to add more. So you can ins instead consider how to apply business savvy in your own personal life. This might involve engaging in strategic problem solving for anything from minor disagreements with friends to major financial decisions in your household. <clears throat> so I'd like to know which approach to business savvy would you like to work on? Helen will launch a poll and I'll give you a minute to answer. All right, a combination of approaches. I like that. So you can go ahead and figure out what works best for you or give different things a try. Awesome. Thank you, Helen. All right. So far, I've discussed different approaches to developing business savvy, but there are certain foundational skills that you might be struggling with, and you might need to address these skills first in order to boost your overall sense of business savvy. These foundational skills include financial literacy, analytical or critical thinking, and problem solving. I'm going to provide a few different suggestions for each of these skills, but you don't have to tackle them all at once. Some of the suggestions I provide will be more straightforward, while others require more effort. As I said before, do whatever feels right for you. 
And in any case, improving on one area will likely strengthen another area. So individuals who have strong financial literacy have the knowledge and skills necessary to make effective financial decisions. Business savvy requires more than just financial literacy, but this could be a key challenge for you due to your role or skill level. Now, learning financial literacy might be easier than you think. <clears throat> you don't have to become an expert. The goal is to simply understand the fundamentals. You could start by watching TED Talks or short videos to learn about basic financial principles that are relevant for your work. Or perhaps you can complete a training or a certification. You can also find a financial mentor. Or to ease into it, you can play with numbers more informally like with brain games. Dive deeper into finance topics that are especially relevant to you or anything that happens to spark your interest. <clears throat> Individuals with strong analytical skills are able to tackle complex issues by collecting and evaluating information, noticing relevant details, and considering different perspectives. <clears throat> To develop this skill, you can start by reading articles or blog posts about analytical and critical thinking. You can also consider challenging yourself by actively flexing your mental muscles at work or even in your everyday life. One way to do this is to simply be curious and ask questions to deepen your understanding of different topics. You can also confront your biases by looking for other sources of information and considering different perspectives. Now, it's important to practice this skill often rather than relying on an underused muscle only when necessary. When you have to analyze complex issues due to an urgent problem at work, you'll know from experience just how to consider multiple angles, ask relevant questions, and think through the issue objectively. <clears throat> now, Perhaps you're already an analytical thinker, but where you really struggle is with strategic problem solving and decision making. This could be because you're too anxious to even try or because you've made mistakes in the past. However, mistakes are a part of the learning process, so don't shy away from them. If you want to ease into it, you can complete a training course on becoming a more effective decision maker, or you can review real life decisions that others have made. As you review sample or real life decisions, consider relevant factors like budget and outcome and think through what the alternative options were. You can also request to shadow a leader at work, paying careful attention to how they make decisions and comparing it to your own thought process. Take this a step further by actively discussing your own ideas and seeking feedback from others. All right, so I'd like to turn to the group again and ask, which one of these foundational skills are you currently struggling with, if any? <clears throat> All right, so about half of you said your financial literacy, um, and then the next majority, about 30%, two or more skills. All right, thank you so much for participating. Uh, now, keep in mind, if you feel like you're limited in your ability to tackle any of these skills at work, you can practice developing these skills in your personal life instead. So for those of you who are struggling with financial literacy, this could be as simple as re reviewing your family budget. You could also consider taking up a new hobby that involves some knowledge learning um, or riddle games or strategy games, or you can help your friend making uh, major decisions in their life.
So think about different ways that you can work on these foundational skills. <clears throat> now, there are some common misconceptions about business savvy that we've seen based on our work with different clients. I've touched on some of these already, but I want to make sure to emphasize them for you as they can really limit your ability to improve in these areas. So some of you might also be interested in advocating for professional development at work, um, such as programs focused on improving business savvy. And identifying these misconceptions now can be helpful for you when it comes to challenging these ideas and others later on. So the first misconception is that some individuals think of business savvy as an innate skill that some are born with and others are not. Now, when you view something as an innate skill, you could be limiting yourself in terms of your potential for development. Some people do in fact have a natural inclination for business savvy, but it is a skill that anyone can work on and develop over time. And I've given you a whole bunch of ideas as to how you can do this. Another misconception is that business savvy is only valuable for certain jobs. Now, workers in different roles, in different organizational levels, and in different industries may apply business savvy differently but it's still a useful skill for all workers as it allows you to better contribute to your organization and to boost your professional growth. You might also have more influence than you think. Consider a cashier. While a cashier is not making major financial decisions for the company that they're working for, they are working on the front lines and they may have a different perspective to offer. For instance, they might notice that customers are really interested in a new product, but are turned off by the price. So the cashier could suggest to their manager that they offer a promotion for this product, and it could end up being a really successful idea. Depending on your role, you can act as the eyes and ears of your company and flex your business savvy in creative ways. Now, if you're in a position of some authority, consider training and encouraging your employees to practice business savvy in creative ways. Another false impression about business savvy is the idea that you need to immediately become an expert before you can apply your business savvy. Now, this limits skill development in two crucial ways. First, like most skills, you need to practice applying business savvy in order to improve. Second, this reinforces the idea that there is a finish line for developing business savvy. Industries and organizations are constantly evolving, so you will need to continually refresh your knowledge and practice flexing your business savvy muscle. And as I said earlier, you don't have to become an expert right away. Now, the final misconception is assuming that you don't have enough time to practice and improve your business savvy. Now, I do recognize that dealing with your regular responsibilities can already be a whirlwind and you can't imagine adding more to your plate. However, I wanna emphasize that there is no one right way to develop business savvy. You can customize your professional development efforts so that they work best for your unique needs. For example, you could take a slow and steady approach, perhaps dedicating only an hour every week for research or for mentorship. Or perhaps you take advantage of a slow season in your industry to complete a certification or a training course. Find whatever works best for you. There's no one right way. All right, so we've chatted so far about what business savvy is, why it's valuable, and how to develop it. I'd also like to give you some bonus tips and tricks for habit formation. So I invite you to ask yourself, are you a lifelong learner? Consider this quote by Brian Tracy, a successful CEO and best-selling author. He says that continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. In fact, we are always learning something new throughout our lives, even if we don't identify as learners. <clears throat> Many industries are constantly and rapidly evolving, 
So in order to maintain your business savvy, you must engage in continuous learning. Without updating your knowledge, you limit your ability to demonstrate good judgment and business sense. Engaging in continuous learning can also help you to develop a stronger knowledge foundation, and you can then apply your skills and your expertise in unexpected ways. Now, even though we're constantly being exposed to different information, it can be difficult to engage in intentional and specific learning. So to help you develop and maintain your business savvy, I'm gonna provide some tips and tricks as to how to make learning a habit. <clears throat> so first, you can consider setting aside dedicated time for learning, and this can be as little or as much time as works for you. If you're engaging in deep learning for the sake of a credential or a training program, you might need to set aside time every single day, such as an hour every day before or after work. In other cases, you can set aside smaller increments of time. For instance, perhaps your mentor has agreed to meet with you once a month, or perhaps you dedicate an hour every Friday afternoon to take notes on relevant TED Talks or business articles. The next tip is to tie your learning routine to an existing habit. The idea is that by pairing these habits, you make it easier for yourself to actually start the new one. Let's say that you already happen to take walks during your lunch break. You can try listening to a business podcast at the same time. You can start by playing the podcast during the first half of your walk and then dedicating the rest of the walk to simply letting your mind wander. The new habit doesn't have to completely overtake the initial habit, but you could end up really enjoying your new routine. Now, if you need some help to maybe make the new habit something that you actually want to do, you can establish habit milestones and motivating rewards. For example, if you recognize that you need to address your financial literacy, you can break this down and you can decide on ways to celebrate your success every time you master a new topic. So this could be as simple as treating yourself to a fancier coffee than you normally would, or trying a new restaurant or a fun activity. You could also uh, aim for a more extravagant uh, reward when you've reached a major milestone. So a related tip here is to find an accountability partner and keep each other committed to your goals. Now, if you don't feel ready to share your goals with others, you can also self-monitor your habit in a habit tracker. Seeing your progress visually or sharing your progress with others can fill you with a sense of pride, but you can also consider pairing this with the reward tip. We also have the two minute rule. Sometimes the hardest part of developing a new skill is simply getting started. The trick here is to tell yourself that you're only gonna spend two minutes on something. Let's say that you're feeling really anxious about improving your analytical thinking skills. You tell yourself that you'll take two minutes to read an article or two minutes just to start play on a learning module. Once you've started something, even if you only meant to do it for two minutes, you may decide to continue either because your interest has been piqued or because you now have the momentum to keep going. Simply showing up can lead you to spend more time on learning. So just get started and see what happens. And this could be as simple as just picking the video that you're gonna watch the next time. Now you don't have to try all of these habit tips and you can certainly try something entirely different if you prefer. The important thing is to find the fun in it. Developing a stronger sense of business savvy doesn't have to be a, a, a boring or a terrifying endeavor. Adopt a playful attitude towards learning and approach challenges with curiosity. This will help you to stay motivated, especially in the face of unexpected delays or mistakes. So I'd like to know, how would you like to make learning a habit for you? And I'll give you a minute to go ahead and answer that. And of course, it could be a combination of approaches, but go ahead and pick the one that um, is speaking to you right now. <laughs>
All right, so some varied responses here. So dedicating time for learning. Yep, that's a really good one. Um, establishing high habit milestones and rewards. Yep, and you can be creative with those rewards. Um, so it seems like um, there is some interest in a lot of these tips. Uh, now, if you've never given any of these tips a try, I recommend that you start with any one of them and just see how you like it. You might find that it can be really effective for your goals. All right, so as part of the learning process, you're going to have to adapt to changes, whether it's minor updates in rules and regulations, major organizational changes, or even your own personal development initiatives. This means that you'll have to engage in unlearning and relearning in order to adapt to these changes. Now, a major component of this process is to recognize and let go of outdated mental models. A mental model represents your perception of a particular concept, and it, it can be harder to break free from this than you might expect. So consider your mental model about driving. Have you ever visited a country where you had to drive on the left-hand side of the road after years of having only driven on the right-hand side? You may have had to explicitly practice driving in this new environment in order to let go of your previous understanding and your execution of the skill. Now, with this driving example, you simply had no choice but to adjust. In the workplace, if you've gotten used to a certain way of doing things, it might be hard to let go of it, let alone even recognize that there is a better or a different way of doing things. To help you to at least recognize these outdated mental models, you need to identify your blind spots and question the status quo. In order to reflect on your assumptions, you can start by expanding your knowledge foundation and intentionally seek out alternative ways of doing things. For example, let's say that you're leading a team of direct reports. You decide that you need to further develop your business savvy in order to become a more effective leader. You begin by reviewing relevant articles on management and you come across this idea of ongoing continuous feedback. Until that point, you had always relied on a one size fits all model of providing feedback on an annual basis. This is how it's always been done in your organization. However, you ultimately decide to give the new feedback system a try, and you find that it really improves employee engagement and productivity. Now, this process of unlearning and relearning does require you to embrace the discomfort of not knowing and potentially not succeeding right away. Now, when you first learned how to ride a bike or drive a car, you likely needed time and practice in order to improve. You'll need time and practice when you are unlearning and relearning as well. So to that end, remind yourself that learning isn't about avoiding mistakes and failures. Mistakes can be extremely valuable for learning and they provide you with the opportunity to reflect on what went wrong and to grow from your experience. In fact, after every project, even when you haven't made a mistake, Take the time to consider what you could have done differently. If you did make a mistake or you realized afterwards that something was less than ideal, reflect on it, but don't dwell on it. When possible, seek out feedback so that you have the benefit of someone else's perspective as well. Now, with all this said, it's also important to celebrate your successes. So be sure to reflect on what went well and treat yourself, even if it's just a pat on the back. All right, so to facilitate employee learning and habit forming, I encourage you to think about building a learning culture within your organization. Now, in a learning culture, employees are encouraged and empowered to engage in continuous learning. They're not penalized for small mistakes, and employee development is prioritized and valued. This is an effective business strategy that demonstrates long-term vision and a commitment to employee growth. You might consider launching a training program based on employee suggestions or organizational needs. 
You might also create a system for providing constructive, meaningful, and frequent feedback to employees. Another suggestion here would be considering collaborating with your employees to create a development plan with specific performance goals. Another easy way to cultivate a learning culture is to simply invite all employees to company meetings to make sure that everyone is aware of organizational goals. Building this learning culture can benefit all employees, not just those who are naturally inclined to learning, and it can help them to develop a stronger sense of business savvy. Now, I want to emphasize that all employees can play a part in creating this learning culture at work. Depending on your role, you might not have the authority to implement a new feedback system, but you could approach your manager to talk about your development goals and to make a request for constructive and frequent feedback. Or you can advocate for yourself to complete a relevant certification. Remember, this doesn't benefit only you, but also your overall organization. So consider what you have in your control and approach your manager to discuss new ideas. Now we're nearing the end of the presentation, so I wanna leave you with a few key takeaways. Remember, Business Savvy allows you to appreciate how you're contributing to your organization's vision and demonstrate good judgment and decision-making. You can develop this skill by expanding your knowledge, creating opportunities at work, engaging in mentorship and networking, or applying your skills in different contexts. You might also want to tackle some foundational skills, such as your financial literacy, your analytical thinking, or your problem-solving abilities. And finally, make learning a habit by engaging in continuous learning, unlearning, and relearning and don't shy away from mistakes. Now, I've provided you with a lot of different strategies for developing your business savvy and working on habit formation. Don't let all of this overwhelm you. I've simply provided all of these different approaches because some might resonate more with others. Look for the way that helps you to hone your business savvy in order to best support your specific development goals. Also keep in mind that skill development does take time. So begin with small achievable goals. As you master your goals, you can begin adding new behaviors. Keep in mind that everyone is gonna face challenges in addition to successes, so be patient but persistent throughout this process. Now, before we close the presentation, I'd like to return to Sigma's leadership competency framework. Remember that business savvy is only one of 50 competencies that are related to leader success. So we measure these competencies through our LSPR assessment or the leadership skills profile revised assessment. Now the LSPR is a key tool that can help you to identify your strengths and development opportunities to support your personal and professional growth. It only takes about 25 minutes to complete and it also gives you a customized focus report that is specific to your results. The focus report also includes templates and instructions for creating a talent development plan. Now, if this is something that you're interested in learning more about, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to support you. If you want to go ahead and take the test, Helen will be dropping a link in the chat to a free trial that will allow you to take this test for free you'll receive access to the full assessment, and you'll receive your results immediately after completion. All right, so throughout this presentation, we focused a lot on individual efforts, and we only touched very briefly on organizational efforts in helping employees develop their business savvy. So at this point, I'm curious, what would you say is the greatest challenge your company faces when implementing strategic plans, such as initiatives to develop employees' business savvy.
Thank you, Helen. So it looks like we have quite a, quite a varied response here. Um, so 40% of you say buy-in, 20% um, of you say long-term commitment, as well as some other challenges here. So, oops. If talent development is something that your organization really struggles with, you can consider contacting us for more information because we have some varied talent development services that we can offer. For instance, you can accomplish months of talent development work in just a few sessions with our consultants. We also provide a free high potential talent development guide, which Helen will drop a link for in the chat. In addition, you can take part in coaching or you can register your team for our lunch and learn seminars. These are convenient one hour virtual seminars that can be delivered to up to 50 participants per session. Each session focuses on developing specific leadership competencies with practical tips and access to additional resources. You might also want to consider working with one of our consultants to help you navigate your unique challenges. We have helped many clients with similar challenges, and we draw on our expertise to provide you with a streamlined process. We are also able to offer accountability and objectivity to help you achieve your goals. All right, and I'm going to hand it over to Helen at this point. Thank you, Shruti. We hope those resources will be helpful for you all. Feel free to email us uh, during after the webinar if you have any questions about them. For now, let's jump into some Q&A. We have a question here for you, Shruti. It goes, what would be an example of a senior leader not demonstrating business savvy in a corporate context? So negative example. A negative example of business savvy? <laughs> um, this could, it, it could, there are so many different ways that this could be demonstrated and it might also be dependent on the industry itself. Um, but one example would be when it comes to long-term goals. So not thinking about long-term objectives, only focusing on urgent problems and um, tackling urgent uh, fires that come up. Yeah, absolutely. Any decision-making that's not data-driven also, I think is something that we've seen in our work with clients. Often there's a need to implement assessments or some of the structures and processes that Trudy has talked about and that Sigma works with. Um, and when you see leaders and organizations working without those types of structures or assessments or anything that adds some objectivity and data to the decision-making process, you're automatically lacking some of the input that business acumen can bring. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, all right, next question. Is business savvy a personality trait? Good question. So personality traits can definitely contribute to your sense of business savvy. And in fact, the way that we measure business savvy on our leadership framework is based on a personality assessment. However, it's not a personality trait in itself, and it is a skill that anyone can work on developing. Thanks, Trudy. Oh, here's a fun one. I don't know if I have a good sense of business savvy. How do I find out? Yeah, so there are a few questions that you can ask yourself to assess your level of business savvy. So would you say that you have a strong understanding of organizational operations and the bottom line? Are you a habitual learner who embraces obstacles and learning opportunities? Do you tend to demonstrate confidence and good judgment when making decisions at work? You can also ask your manager or your colleagues at work for informal feedback to help you to reflect on what they say. I would also really recommend taking the LSPR to discover your score on business savvy. You can take the test for free. And as I mentioned, Helen has already dropped the link to the LSPR in the chat. Mm -hmm. I'll say as well that we have a 360 degree version of the LSPR, which allows you to get feedback from other people in your organization on those competencies for you. So Often we see people do the two in conjunction where you do a self-assessment, but then after some development, you also do a 360 degree assessment, which asks your peers, your direct reports, your managers for input. And that way you can see what other people are saying about you rather than just thinking, hmm, how do I feel I do on all of these different things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think I will ask one more question just so that we can leave some time for announcements at the end. 
I don't have much decision-making power in my role. Is business savvy still important for me? Mm, really good question. So yes, I would say that it is still important um, because you may be able to apply your business savvy in unexpected ways. So I gave the example of a cashier earlier. Workers on the front line who work very closely with customers can act as the eyes and ears of the company. You might also be operating in a behind the scenes type of role and you could offer a different perspective that can spark a great idea. So yes, I absolutely believe that regardless of your level of decision-making power, business savvy is still important. You could also consider challenging yourself to practice applying business savvy, because even if you don't necessarily have many opportunities to apply it now in your current role, it could help you with your long-term professional growth. Mm -hmm. And I'll just jump on that too and say, as Shruti mentioned during the webinar, business savvy is something that you can use outside of a business context as well. These types of analytical and decision-making skills are very useful in personal life. Uh, no matter what stage you're in. So it's always, always useful to take a learning approach on something like this. Absolutely. Thank you, Helen. Thank you everyone for the questions. Okay. So with the last couple minutes, I will just say that Sigma is AT, APTD and CPTD certified, which means that you can use this webinar to get one professional development credit towards your certification. You know what you need to do if you know what I'm talking about and you want to do that. If you have no idea, feel free to disregard or Google the certification. I will also say that if you liked what you saw here, please do go over to our website and take a look at our events tab. We have monthly webinars happening in 2023. Each one is on a very different topic. So we've got some other skills focused ones. We also have some webinars on assessments or things like succession planning and leader character. So there's a very broad range. I will drop a link in the chat to this for you as well, just to make the clicking a little bit easier. Oh, yes. Thank you, Helen. There you go. Oh, wait, the slide is not always helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last thing I'll say is if you had any questions that didn't get answered or if more questions come up as you're thinking about this webinar or viewing the recording, please don't hesitate to send us an email. You will also see a little feedback survey pop up when you exit this webinar. We do take a look at that feedback and we're always revising our webinars. So please take a minute to let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, anything you'd like to see in the future. And we will take that into account as we're planning upcoming sessions. All right, that's awesome. it for today. Thank you everyone for joining us. We hope that it's been helpful for you in your professional and your personal development. And thank you, Shruti. <laughs>